Hey, this is Daryl Pillsbury along with my cameraman, Joe Bushy. Hey, Joe, say hey. Hey, Joe. Hey, there he is. And we're out today on another Gallery Walk Friday. Uh, we're, right now, we're outside the Democratic headquarters here on uh, Flat Street. And um, we're going to bring you a few of the uh, Democrats running for our office here, um, for different offices in the state level and locally. Um, just talk to them for a few minutes, let you put a face on uh, some of the people's names and let you try and you know see who's running for what um, so we're gonna do that uh, behind us also there's gonna be a lot of we got the the um, what do they call it Joe Stanley stock. the Stanley stock right here Our Stanley Lions meals. right down here the bikes come in it's really an interesting time we'll be here for that and we may even have a little time to walk Ma uh, Main Street just for a little bit and see what's going on up there too so stick with us um, it's another pulse uh, Friday and uh, we're glad you're watching. Oh, a couple other things, folks, while I'm thinking here. And that doesn't happen a lot, I know. But if you'd like to be a sponsor of our show, as you see when you watch the show at the beginning at the end, we put up our sponsors and stuff. Uh, if you'd like to be a sponsor of the show, uh, for 100 bucks you get five shows, okay? We put you on at the beginning and the end. And believe it or not, folks, people actually do watch the Pulse of Brattleboro. It's a nice little cheap for $20. You can get your name on the front and the end of this show, which plays about, oh, maybe 10 times in two weeks every month. So um, if it's something you'd like to do, get a hold of Joe Bushy, okay? And you can do that by writing to us, pulseofbrattleboro at yahoo.com. Again, that's pulseofbrattleboro at yahoo.com. And what we can do, we come, we take a picture of your business, we put it up there, and we thank you for being one of our sponsors. So... It's easy to do. Talk to Joe. We'll set you up, get you right in. We'd like to have, like, five sponsors for our shows. It costs us a little bit of money for tapes and stuff like that, so that's why. Um, and it's a good way to get a little advertisement in. And if you don't want to be a sponsor of the show, just want to get a hold of us, tell us what you'd like us to see us do, or if you like the show, hate the show, whatever, get a hold of them again, PulseBrattleboro at Yahoo.com, and let us know. With that... Let the show begin. We'll start grabbing some of these folks, and um, we'll see who we can talk to first. Okay, uh, here we are outside of the Democratic headquarters, and we are with... State Treasurer Beth Pierce. And Beth, uh, nice to see you. Thanks for coming down to Brattleboro. Uh, it's a great day, a beautiful event, and looking forward to it. Good. Now, listen... Um, you, this is your time, first time actually running for a, uh, uh, this office. Uh, you were appointed um, by, I think, the governor with Jeb's uh, blessing to, uh, I'm very, I always like Jeb, and we had talked about that before. Um, you were familiar with the job, but how has it been now that you're the, you're the person, man? It's, it's, it's on your shoulders. Number one, how is it, and, and do you like it? Okay, I love the job. It's the best job in the state, and it's the only elective office I'm interested in. Uh, I've been in Treasury Management for 35 years, so I was Jeb's deputy for seven and a half years prior to the governor appointing me as treasurer. This is my life's work. I love it. I'm very good with taxpayer money and managing those those dollars and uh, trying to find creative and, and measured and, and good solutions to problems. Uh, and I think that we're building on the work of uh, Treasurer Jeb Spaulding and uh, moving forward in uh, some very creative areas in the area of energy. Uh, we're doing some uh, financing of energy, uh, uh, energy efficiency and uh, renewable energy. We're working on private activity bonds, which are a way to help uh, in terms of taxes and financing for private use and, and help with economic development. So we're looking at ways that we can help Vermont continue to be prosperous and move forward. Excellent. Uh, another thing that I know that you guys do is you do keep a pretty good eye on our bond rating. How are we doing on that, by the way? We're doing great. Uh, the state is rated AAA, which is the highest rating by Fitch and Moody's, and AA plus by State and Poor's, which is the second highest notch. That's the best state credit in New England. We're very proud of that. That helps us in many ways. Number one, it lowers the cost when we do a bond issue, and we just did a bond issue to do some transportation work and some bridge work uh, to help with Irene. Uh, we did a bond issue in March, a uh, larger bond issue, and we were able to do a refinancing. Just at home with low interest rate environments, you might refinance your, your, your mortgage. We refinance some of the state's debt and save the taxpayers $5.4 million. That bond rating helps us with that. It also helps us because that's the backing for a number of other, other areas in, in affordable housing, renewable energy, uh, VSAC with college loans, and VITA with economic development. So our bond rating helps. It touches everyone in the state. 
Excellent. Well, Beth, I, uh, I also had the privilege of working with you when I was in the state legislature. Not real closely. I mean, um, I, to be honest with you, I'm glad you love the, what you're running for because it's, I'm not really good with all that. Uh, and um, so, so personally, I'm, I'm glad you, that we have people with your expertise that step up and do that. And with all of that, uh, the knowledge that you have and everything, and like I said, when I worked with you back in the early 2000s and stuff, it was a pleasure working with that office. Uh, you did a tremendous job. I think that uh, you um, fit right in well with, with the job and the office, and you've done a great job. I appreciate that. You know, it's all about Vermont values. You know, as, as Vermonters, we're thrifty, we're hardworking, uh, we're resilient. We saw that in Irene. But we also reach out and help one another. And that's what the Treasurer's Office. We're thrifty with your dollars, we're hardworking, resilient, but we also look at ways that we can help move Vermont forward, and that's important. And one of the other little things that you do that people never know until they see it in the paper ah. is the money thing. You know? I mean, unclaimed that's property. That's right. We have unclaimed property, uh, which means that if you might have lost a uh, track of a bank account that you might have had if you're a college student and you moved you might have forgot about a utility deposit the companies don't get to keep that they remit that to the state that's called a sheet mint and then we try to find the rightful owners we're one of the best states in the country in getting money back to folks this past year we had an extra eight hundred thousand uh, dollars from uh, working on an audit with an insurance company if your loved one went out and got a life insurance policy we think you ought to be able to get the proceeds of that and uh, we, we reached out done that and we're doing some outreach now we had over 14,000 folks claim money, and you can look at it at the Vermont Treasurer's Office. Uh, look at uh, uh, vermonttreasurer.gov, and we'll be happy to, uh, there's a section on unclaimed property. Hopefully your name is in there. File a claim form. We want to get that money back out to you. That's right, and, and, and they do, folks, so that's something to remember. Uh, well, thanks for the awful for taking a moment with us, and how is the campaign going so far? How do you think? Uh, I, you know, it's, it's invigorating. I, I really love getting out, talking to folks in uh, all different parts of the state, and learning from each other. Uh, I'm very good at finances. I want to hear people's perspectives and, their, and how it impacts them. And as I said, what we do touches every Vermonter's life. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. You betcha. Hey, Pat. How are you? Excellent. Nice to see you. Okay, we are standing with... Cassandra Gikas, running for Lieutenant Governor. Uh, nice to meet you, Cassandra, and good luck. Um, now, let's just, this is, this is a first-time thing for you. Hi, this is the first time I'm running for office, Chris. Wow, well, you're picking a big one. I am. Yeah. Uh, where are you from? I'm from Pennsylvania originally, but I've been in Vermont for eight years and have been an advocate on the ground and behind the scenes, and okay. and now I'm living in Montpelier. Oh, nice place, too. It is, a, you know, I lived up there when, when you were in session. It's a very nice town. Um, so running for lieutenant governor, it's going to be a little tough run. How is everything going for you so far? It's going great. I'm having a lot of fun. I've been out there meeting Vermonters. We've been on road shows constantly, really trying to talk about you know the experience and the knowledge that I bring to the table, and really make this a positive issues-based campaign about where Vermont is headed. So, talk to me what you do because uh, people down here probably don't know your name and exactly what what it is that you stand for. So, so let us let the folks know what you bring to the table and what are some of your main issues. Absolutely. So I've been an advocate behind the scenes for about 10 years now. Health Healthcare reform is the most important issue to me. The reason why I decided to jump into this race is because I want. I think the governor has Vermont on the right track, and I want to make sure that we stay there. We have some big dip ticket decisions coming up in January, and I want to make sure that everyone in the state in Vermont has access to affordable health care. That's number one. Beyond that, um, I've done a lot of work on issues like transportation, federal nutrition policy. I really want to make sure that as we move forward, that young families, that Vermont is a place where they can work, where they can live, where they can be prosperous for, for generations to come. So I want to work on affordable child care, job training and education, which making retirement affordable for families. Um, and in addition to all of that, I really want the chance to stand up, uh, preside over the Senate for the issues that matter most to Vermont, for Vermonters' rights. So for me, that includes the rights for child care workers to collectively bargain, um, the right for women to choose, you know, what happens with their bodies, um, the right for, for couples to be entitled to the same benefits across the board. So these are the issues that are really important to me, and I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. Uh, Actually, I think those are important to a lot of Vermonters. As I watch the national scene, I just can't believe the attack on the things you just named. You know, I mean, I'm for the unions. I'm for health care for all. I'm, that, that's for me, too. Um, so anyway, uh, very good. 
Um, now, where do you see the campaign going now? You're doing a lot of traveling. You don't have any uh, primary, so you're only in the November election. From here to there, what do you, what do you see happening? It's a, it's a long haul. It's a long haul, but I'm ready for it. I enjoy being the underdog. I have a lot of energy, and I know that I can outwork my opponent. So we're on the road. We're going to be, like I said, running a positive issues-based campaign. I want to celebrate the things that I love and Vermonters love about this state, and uh, we're ramping up. I mean, my I have a long track record in the state house working to pass policy. Now, my biggest challenge is getting out there and making sure Vermonters know my name, know what I stand for, and that we share the same values. So that's what I'm going to be working on all summer, and that's going to be door to door, person to person, one vote at a time. And I'm looking forward to every moment of it. Excellent, and uh, thank you for putting your name out there and running. I know how hard it is, and and when you run for office, it's you. You're not selling anything out, you're selling you. Um, and it may take a little time, it may not. Uh, you seem to have a great personality. I love your positions, so uh, that's good. <laughs> uh, and. Um, I think that it's not. I, I, no, I don't want to ask you how old you are, but uh, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're a lot younger than I am, and it's nice to have young blood going into this because uh, the future is bright if, if we can get the right people going there. And, and, and I love Vermont. I've been here my whole life, and um, your values seem to connect with most of ours. So we'll see what happens. Good luck. Thank you very much. This is the reason why I moved to Vermont, and I'm here to stay. And for me, this is a lifetime commitment to public service. So. Excellent. Thank you very Thank much you for your very time. Much. Take care. Okay, we ready? Okay, so, oh, they're getting ready for this. Wait a minute, we're going to do this really quick. So, hey, we're standing here with uh, our Attorney General Bill Sorrell, and welcome to Brattleboro again. Great to be here. And just tell us, what's uh, how's the campaign going for you? The campaign's going really well. I've got all kinds of support all over the state, literally. My big concern is that my supporters won't vote in the primary because they don't think I need the votes. But I need support August 28th, or I'm not even on the ballot come November. So the trick is to get out and vote. You can vote early now, get it done with, or show up at the polls on the 28th. And one of the good things about that, and that is true for you Democrats, you got to get out. You got two things in this area. You got uh, the Attorney General's office, and we do have District Three House race. So try and make sure you make it. It's important to participate. Yeah, it is. Uh, so, I, and um, this is your first time really running. First time I've had serious opposition, but I welcome. Looks like you're having a good time. I'm having a good time. I'm happy to be in Brattleboro tonight. All right. Well, listen. I guess we got to kind of cut it short, but I did want to get everybody to get your face on and, and see that you're down here. Working. Thank you very much. You got you. Take care. Okay, let's get the rim and cover here. All right. Uh, let me welcome you to the opening of the Democratic Party headquarters in Wyndham County. Uh, I'm for Peter Galbraith, and it's my uh, great privilege to represent you uh, in the Vermont Senate. Uh, you might ask why in the as uh, Rod Gander once commented, in the bluest town, in the bluest county, in the bluest state, we need to have a Democratic Party headquarters. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit like opening a new Catholic chapel in the Vatican. <laughs> but, uh, and, and frankly, but let's be blunt about this issue, about what's at stake here. Uh, we have, uh, for re-election, our excellent uh, governor, Peter Shumlin, our excellent congressman, Peter Welch, and I, I like the slogan, vote for Peter, keep it simple. <laughs> uh, our democratically endorsed senator, Bernie Sanders. Uh, we have an overwhelmingly democratic House and Senate. We have uh, 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 the other constitutional officers. Uh, and we have a few competitive races. But we also have something else at stake, and that is right over there. It's the presidential election. And that's why one of the main reasons we need to mobilize here in Brattleboro, because so much is at stake in this election. The President of the United States, you know, uh, <clears throat> we can compare what's going on in Europe and the United States. Why are, why is the European co economy is collapsing? Because they're following exactly the same policies that Mitt Romney would adopt here. He, he talked about 12 million jobs. Well, I'm guessing that's how many jobs would be lost if Mitt Romney were president, following policies of cutting the taxes for those who 
need the money the least and cutting services and investments in the people who need them the most. And frankly, since I, you know I have a background in foreign policy, uh, let's also not forget that his chief foreign policy aide thinks that we need to be worrying about the threat from the Soviet Union. <laughs> well, that is a mindset or a war with Iran. Frankly, I think we've had enough wars and let's, let's remember there's, the Republicans didn't want to fight Adolf Hitler, but since then they haven't found, had a war they didn't like. And I, I think we don't need that. Well, that's not quite true. They didn't like uh, Kosovo. They didn't what Bill Clinton did. They didn't like what uh, Barack Obama did in Libya. <clears throat> Two conflicts in which we achieved 100% of our objectives without a single American or NATO casualty. But the, otherwise, that's their agenda. So that, that is really important. Uh, it's also important that we continue to make the progress that we've been making in Vermont uh, with our uh, universal health care, uh, the cleanup from Irene, uh, and balanced budgets uh, that we've had so far without broad-based taxes. Now, the governor couldn't be with us today, but he sends his greetings, as do our senators, uh, Senator Sanders and um, uh, Leahy, as does Congressman uh, Welch. But we are blessed with some really distinguished uh, office holders and candidates statewide. We uh, have uh, uh, our treasurer, Beth Pierce. Uh, who's, who's taken over the job from Jeb Spaulding off to a great start. We have our Attorney General, Bill Sorrell. Uh, and I have to say about Bill, uh, you know, I, I began in politics in Vermont in 1970 with Buddy Spino and Tim O'Connor and Don Webster on the Hoff for Senate campaign. And at that time down here, we always cursed the Chittenden County Democrats because they were so well organized and we were still pretty Republican. And it was uh, Bill's mother, Esther, who was a champion of that. Uh, and so great to have you uh, here. Uh, we have uh, um, Jim Condos. Our Secretary of State. He has a bit of a Soviet style election, but that <laughs> So he might be he might he might be a little nostalgic. That means just doesn't have an opponent <laughs> yet, yet. But he's not taking any chances. Uh, and then we have a, a number of excellent candidates. We have the energetic uh, Chittenden County State's Attorney, T.J. Donovan. Boy, what a, what a race for Attorney General. What good alternatives. Um, we have uh, Doug Hoffer, uh, who has uh, running for um, uh, auditor, uh, uh, and uh, who I certainly knew when he came to testify before our committee. And uh, we have uh, our candidate for Lieutenant Governor, uh, Patrick Hathor. I, I think, I, you know, that, that we're looking to see her uh, standing over the Senate, uh, presiding. You know, the, the current lieutenant governor is a, a fine fellow and been very fair, but uh, frankly, his politics are not in step with the, what the people of Vermont are. So I think it's great that you got into the race and among the statewide candidates, I think that's uh, terrific. <laughs> now, Wyndham County also has I think the best delegation in Montpelier uh, uh, from the House, we have my representative, Dick Merrick, from, from New Thing on the Judiciary Committee. We have the ubiquitous uh, Mike Mulricki, wow. <laughs> ubiquitous in Wyndham County and in, in Montpelier, and he's the fellow who chairs our our, our, our county delegations. Is Valerie Stewart here? Well, uh, Valerie um, is uh, uh, on the education and a real spark to uh, the delegation. And John Moran from Wardsboro uh, on the uh, General Affairs Committee and a, a champion of, uh, of, of a working man. And uh, I appreciate an ally in the effort to, to get the 21 million back to the ratepayers. Didn't quite succeed in the House, but not because of a failure on his part. Uh, and then we have uh, some other representatives. Uh, 
if I miss somebody who's... I, I'm going to get to the candidates. <laughs> uh, we, we, well, I'll go to the candidates now. We have Kate O'Connor uh, and Kristen Toledo, who are contesting the uh, uh, Brattleboro is it District Two, three District Three race. What a what a set of choices that that are here. I, I what a tough uh, tough tough choice. Not only that, but I have to say from two great Brattleboro families. I hope you'll forgive me, but uh, 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 you know, Tim and Martha O'Connor, Don and Beverly Webster, uh, again, people that I know going back to, to 1970. Uh, and I have to also acknowledge my predecessor as state chair. I was state chair in the 1970s, John Carnahan. Uh, I'm going to now, Valerie. Right behind. Right behind. Right behind. Right behind. What did I say? If you're irrepressible, enthusiastic, and Chris Moore from the uh, Rockingham District, and um, couldn't be here it was Carolyn Partridge uh, from Wyndham, who's the chair of the Agriculture Committee, uh, Matt Treber, uh, uh, who replaced uh, the didn't quite replace because uh, you can't replace Michael Bahowski but uh, took his seats doing a great job. Ann Van Waring from Wilmington, uh, who has uh, was our voice on appropriations and took, has taken the lead after Irene. Uh, and uh, David Dean, chair of the, uh, um, of the Fish and Wildlife Committee in the House. And uh, I have a particular warm spot for him. He, he shepherded through the House bill, which was to provide a moratorium on the destructive practice of hydraulic fracking. I was pleased to say in the Senate we got into a complete ban, the first state in the country to ban fracking. Uh, so, and finally, uh, the Molly state Burke. Molly, Molly Burke. Burke, thank you, Molly Burke on transportation, uh, who has been terrific uh, on the safe streets. Uh, and uh, Sarah Edwards, who alas is leaving us, I think she's in Belize, uh, look at, continuing what she did in the um, in, in the legislature, which is to be concerned about the environment. And now on the state senate, we have a candidate, uh, Mary Kane uh, from Brattleboro. Uh, she's uh, very energetic in her campaign. And also, now I bring my regrets from my colleague, uh, Jeanette White, who has uh, served Wyndham County so well uh, uh, for the last uh, 10 years, going for uh, uh, an additional term uh, she has uh, you know helped uh, bring a, bring through the Senate uh, what we wanted which was the single-payer health care system uh, again the balanced budgets and has been a real leader on some issues that haven't been so high profile but you know uh, uh, very important uh, decriminalizing um, you know if not, helping people avoid criminal records for what is a, such a common offense and so destructive and costly that is possession of small amounts of marijuana and uh, so a real champion there uh, but she couldn't uh, be here and um, I think I, I have uh, done my duty on introductions I, I want to before I turn it over to Bill Johnson to say a few words I want to thank uh, of the entire, you know, the, the people who work in the Democratic Party. Uh, as a former chair of the state party, uh, I know that's really the, key, the the people who work is the key to what elected officials are able to do. And um, uh, Bill is going to thank everybody, but I'm going to thank Bill and Betty, who was the first Betty Fry who put this together. My own personal guru and mentor and advisor, you can see, giving me cues here, <laughs> and our state committee man, previous chairman, uh, and his honor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, now I suppose we can't call him Monty Barnett since he's now a judge, so Lamont Barnett. <laughs> and, and finally, uh, Bill, where are you? Right here. Here. I have a, a little gift from the archives. Um, this will go back to days that that um, uh, 
that, that Buddy and uh, Tim and uh, Don uh, will remember, and Steve Anderson of the Hoff campaign. Uh, you know, Phil Hoff didn't make it to the Senate that that, that year, um, but he was the father uh, of the of the Democratic Party in Vermont, and uh, uh, so that's a, a little relic that there, 42 years ago. Before the next Oh, tough act to follow, Peter. Isn't this a great crowd? Don't we have a great bunch of candidates to... <laughs> and don't we have a marvelous space for our candidate headquarters this year? Yes. Actually, it's thanks to, unfortunately, thanks to Hurricane Irene that this space is available. It was flooded with two feet of water right here where we're standing. All the sheetrock inside and the wiring had to be replaced. And the owner, who is a very supportive Democrat, <coughs> was willing to make it available to us because she didn't yet have a commercial tenant. The two other spaces down here also vacant. Talk it up, folks, if you know possible tenants for these remaining places. And uh, anyway, uh, I just want to give another <coughs> vote of thanks to, to Betty Pro Fry and Pam Reed. <laughs> for putting together in a very short notice, which is a few days, a few hours here and there. They've done a wonderful job. Now Pam, I introduce also because she will be <coughs> scheduling you and you and you and you to serve as receptionists. I've got the sign up sheet right here. Come see me. Receptionists. Now, you know in the past, we count on people coming through the doors and we count on someone being there to receive them. Hey, Andy, good to see you. Uh, <coughs> to, uh, to volunteer for everything that needs to be done, whether it's to go the other side of Wantastic Mountain to sign up people to vote for Obama, or whether it's to work very hard for the coordinated campaign on behalf of <coughs> Uh, Peter Welch, Bernie Sanders, <coughs> Peter Schumann, and these fine candidates that are here either to my left or right. So, I know that uh, it's still vacation time, but starting Monday morning, we'll be working here, and maybe you've got a little more vacation ahead of you, but after Labor Day, no more excuses. <laughs> You'll be here helping us out. Uh, just a couple other people I want to mention. We're fortunate to have a Main Street location also this year, and thanks to Catherine Dianich Gruber, who four years ago <coughs> made her gallery space at the Hooker Dunham uh, <coughs> building available to the Obama campaign. And way back in February, she approached us and wanted to do that again this year. So it is happening. And Dorothy Baldwin, who many of you know, the staff at Brattleboro High School, he is up there as we speak, receiving the public up there. And that's our Main Street location to send people down here. Likewise, we will refer people up there. But here is the Obama headquarters, as well as the coordinated campaign headquarters, and headquarters for all of the Wyndham County candidates. Up there, in a Main Street location, we'll have candidate <coughs> information available, sign-up sheets as well, and there will, from time to time, there will be special events at both places. The candidates, we hope you'll be back for meet the candidate events, which, uh, uh, whenever you want one, just let us know and we'll schedule it. Or, if you prefer to have it at that nice uh, space at the Hooker Dunham, it can be done up there as well. Uh, finally, there are two people, <coughs> Three actually, <coughs> who the uh, third one I saw come in a, a bit ago, Dottie Deans. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Dottie Deans is our vice chair of the state committee, and I guess she brings <coughs> greetings from 
<laughs> from Jay, from Jay and Julia. Um, if you want me to sit out, on, on behalf of Jay, Julia, and the staff at the BDP, we're very happy to see what a beautiful location that Winnipeg County has. I know that Betty Fry has done immense job of getting it all organized. I thank Bill and the whole committee uh, on behalf of the BDP. We have wonderful candidates that we all need to step up and help and make sure that they are re-elected or elected uh, so that we can start out and uh, continue on forward uh, with Governor Shumlin. So I, I really would encourage you all to, to participate and volunteer and offer your, your help to every candidate. And the other part of it is be involved in your county committee. Go to your meetings. Bring a friend. Get more people involved. We need, we need people of all ages to be involved in the Democratic Party. So thank I you, thank you all for being here. Thank you, and I look forward to One more word about the operations of the state committee, and that is it depends on donations from all of us to make it continue to happen. Uh, we've had problems in the past of continuity from one campaign cycle to the next. This year, there is an effort <laughs> through an organization known as the 1963 Club. If you don't know what that means, think about 1963. Where were you? What was happening that year, etc. And then go to the <clears throat> Vermont Democratic Party website and click on the 1963 Club link and sign up for your monthly donation as a sustaining member of the Vermont Democratic Party. Uh, let's, uh, let's make that happen, folks. You also Finally, have local jars in there, too. Yes, uh, you can make out also uh, the Wyndham <laughs> County Democratic Party needs or Democratic Committee. We need some support to be able to pay the rent all the way to November here. And so we're counting on your donations to help us do that. I'm sure it will happen. Don't worry. We won't let ourselves be evicted the day before November the 7th. <laughs> and speaking of the operations here, there are two final people I want to recognize. And that is Diana Painter. Diana, step forward. <laughs> Diana is the field uh, coordinator for all the way from Vernon to Derby Line and from St. Johnsbury to Montpelier, right? So she's logging up a lot of miles, but uh, keeping things in order at each of these county locations up and down the state. Finally, last but far from least, our own Joan Bowman. Sunday she gets a couple of days, a couple of hours off. Uh, but anyway, she needs help back there for data, making phone calls, etc. So the working is going to you over here. Betty, tell us what to do next. Can, can you handle this? <laughs> Everybody come up because we want photo op. Everybody's got a camera, get it out. Photo op, photo, photo op. Come close so out of the dark. All, all I can see is uh, on, on Bill's remarks, if you if you know where what you remember what you were doing in 1963, it is a sign we need to get more young people into the party. <laughs> right? Yes. All right. Are we ready? To victory! <laughs> Anyhow, the principal is right. We are determined.
Okay, standing here with... T.J. Donovan, candidate for Attorney General. Okay, T.J., uh, and I'm going to be supporting you, just to get that out there, really, but it's supposed to be nonpartisan here. This is the Democratic group. But anyway, how's the campaign going, number one? It's going great. We're uh, organized, we're motivated, we got a lot of momentum, we got a lot of support. It's on to Victory August. We get a lot of union support. VSEA, firefighters, the state police, the sheriffs, the building trades, AFL-CIO, every major labor organization is supporting my candidacy. Excellent. That's good. That's good to have. I'm a big labor guy anyway. Uh, so what are some of you, look at the camera on this one and, and tell the folks uh, why you want their vote and what are some of the key issues for you? Absolutely. I think after 15 years, it's time for a change in the Attorney General's office. It's time for new energy, new ideas, and new engagement. Whether it's the issues of consumer rights, I want every parent to know what's in the food their kids are eating. I support GMO labeling. Whether it's the issue of standing up for the most vulnerable, let's stand up for the seniors. I'm going to create an elder abuse unit that stops not only the physical abuse, but the financial exploitation of our senior citizens. I'll also address the number one public safety and public health issue in this state, the prescription drug epidemic. And I'm also going to address the issues of poverty and mental illness and substance abuse. We can no longer separate the issue of poverty from the issue of the criminal justice system. I have a plan for reform that includes decriminalization of marijuana and a second chance agenda for folks that need it. This is about justice, this is about equity, this is about bringing fairness and leveling the playing field to everybody in the state of Vermont. That's why I'm running for Attorney General. These are the new ideas. This is the change that's needed. I got the support of the labor unions. I got support of police. I got support of Governor Phil Hoff. I got support of Senator Dick Sears, Representative Bill Lippert, both chairs of the Judiciary Committee. The people that do this work are supporting my candidacy. It's time for change. Excellent, excellent. And, um, well, good luck to you, okay? And that's going to do it for, I got to get a few other candidates on here. But when you come down again, let's get together and do yeah. it. Although I hear you did do a yeah, okay, good, good. Because uh, when you come down again, let me know. Let's do a half hour studio show. Let's try and help you out. Let's get you elected. All right. That's one of the things I can do when it's my show, folks. See, I can pick them and choose them. Uh, where is he? There he is. Here's the man I helped put in office. There's no doubt about it. He swam through Wyndham County because of. All the hard work right here on the Pulse of Brattleboro. Actually, that's not true. He did it all himself. But listen, uh, this guy I, I, I do know, but anyway, uh, you are? Jim Condo, Secretary of State. That's right. Doing a heck of a job, too, up there. As a matter of fact, one of the ways you can always tell how good of a job an incumbent's doing is if the other party says, we have alone. It looks like that's what you're getting. Well, so far, they, they say that they're going to uh, have an opponent after the primary, but we'll see. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, first off, Jim, you, you come with a lot of experience in the Senate. Uh, we worked together we across the table a few times. Uh, what was it like going into state office full time? And um, I know you like it, so tell us why you like it. Well, the, the job is really made for, for the talents that I have. I mean, first of all, I'm bringing my business background. I have over 30 years of business background. I've got over... 25 years of, of elected service, serving as a city councilor, serving as a state senator, and now as, a, as secretary of state. All sorts of boards and commissions. And, and every, and every county I board that you can imagine. how many things you yeah. said when I started reading the thing. So it's, it's, a lot of meetings, huh? It's, it's been, it was a lot of meetings, but you know, I really enjoy it. I really like giving back to my community. Now my community is just a little bit bigger. It's the whole state of Vermont. But, uh, you know, the issues that we have to deal with, uh, I have the Office of Professional Regulation. We have 58,000 license holders uh, of the professional licenses, 45 different professions. I have the SARA, the State Archives uh, and Records Management Unit. I have the Elections Division, which obviously I want to make sure that we have honest and fair elections throughout the state. And uh, the last thing I have is the Corporations Division, where every business that wants to start in Vermont has to stop through that office, step through that office to register their business, whether it's an LLC or mutual benefit corp or whatever, to have to come through our office. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we've been trying to bring up, up to snuff the uh, technology throughout the uh, office. We, we've really... Uh, it, it was a little bit weak, and, and we're really getting there. When I was there. How's the archive building? Well, the archive I mean, building is beautiful. is beautiful. You ought to come up and do a story about that. 
You're right. That's I right. should. I, you know what? I'll call you one of these times. All right. You set it up and we'll go. And I'll, I'll try and get. You don't have to be with me. Greg, go with anybody. Greg's still there? Greg Sanford just retired this yeah, week. But I'll try and get him to come in. Oh, okay. Just so that's the guy. That would be yeah. the guy. Okay, well, I'll try and get a thing. thing. I'll try and get a thing with Joe. Uh, I forget about that. Hey, he does a better job at this than I do, man. <laughs> so in any case, you know, we have a lot to do, but we're, we got a lot looking forward, and then, and I'll just keep plugging away, working with the legislature to get get the support I need and, and make the changes to the statute. I mean, this year we're hoping uh, that the legislature will finally deal with the campaign finance and lobbyist disclosure issues. Uh, we need to deal with the open meeting laws. They haven't been updated. Uh, the, the, the public records were. Now we've got to got to deal with the open meeting side. So, you know, we have a lot of major uh, legislation that we'll, we'll be dealing with, but you know, we're looking forward to it. How come we can't ever get the hospitals in that open meeting law? Those boardrooms, man. I tried to do that when I went to the legislature, and holy moly, I saw how much that was hard to do. Turn them into public offices, and then we can do it. Oh man, I'm telling you, it was unbelievable that we can't do that. But anyway, Jim, doing a great job. I'm so glad to see you there. Thanks. And uh, you Come look on. like you're having a heck of a good time. Give me a call sometime. We'll set it up. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you, Jim. We are standing with Doug Hoffer, running running for state auditor. Okay, and this is your uh, second go around at this. Correct. And um, what do you think that this brings? You did it once. A statewide election is a tough thing to do. Now you got the experience of doing it once. Is it coming a little bit better this time around? It's coming a little easier. I'm working harder. I know better where to put my time and energy. It's still tough. It's very difficult. It doesn't seem like a big state, so you have to start driving around. Yeah, that's true, too. And because it is, you know, it, well, we got the interstate on this side and in the middle, but then once you get some of these roads, you don't even have an interstate. So On the other hand, uh, it's not always easy to leave the house. And, oh, my God, I have a two-hour drive. But when you get out there, the reminder of the beauty of this oh. state, and I don't say that for the camera. It's, it's no, to be honest with you, Doug, I'm with you. There's certain trips I take, and I just I enjoy the, the Route 30. I mean, there's just so many. And then, of course, you get the 91 corridor from Bolton Flats here, where you just die. Even <laughs> down from Sharon up to Randolph is a great stretch. So, listen, what uh, what are some of the things uh, that you uh, want to bring to the office? Well, I think uh, it would be helpful to have a little more transparency. Uh, the, the auditor posts a little bit of information about his budget on his website, but in no specific detail. That's one. Furthermore, I think it would be extremely helpful if whenever an audit or a review was published, to tell people how much it cost. Uh, that's important because you got to weigh the costs and benefits. If you spent 120 grand but you didn't recover any money, maybe that wasn't the best use of those resources. So there's a lot of things to do. Some of them are kind of wonky. But it's also about discretion. Part of the budget can be used for purposes that are determined by the auditor. Most of it is uh, the single audit, as it's called, and the review of the state's financial statements. But there's a piece that the auditor can carve out and pursue interests of his or her own, either in concert with the administration, the legislature, or not. And I think I'm well uh, positioned to do that. I've been asking tough questions for a long time. I have a talent for that. I have a passion for challenging conventional wisdom. And I'm a numbers guy, and it's a numbers job. It sure is, and I'm glad you're the numbers guy, because I was in the legislature for eight years, and it was the numbers act. Wow, because you're talking numbers, okay? It isn't anything like balancing my checkbook, which I have a hard time doing that, okay? So I'm glad we have capable people that are willing to run and understand all that stuff and bring that expertise to your citizens of the legislature because you're the guy that's going to be coming before some of the committees and you've got to explain it to a guy like me, uh, which I'm not saying I don't get it all, but it's a lot harder for me. So what is your background? Well, fortunately, uh, although I came out of law school to Burlington to work uh, in City Hall for Bernie Sanders in 1988, <clears throat> I've been here 24 years, and I'm a policy analyst. And I didn't go to law school to practice. I thought it would be good preparation for policy work, and it was, and I'm very pleased that I did that. But I am a number cruncher. And, you know, it, it, there are many aspects to the job of being state auditor. That's not the only skill that's required. But your point just then, can you explain it to people who may not be numbers people? I'm the author of something called the Job Gap Study, which introduced the concept of the livable wage to Vermont, among other things. That was a document I think that I looked at many times. A long time ago, 15 years ago, the first one. There were 10 phases to the study, and it may continue. Uh, but part of the task and the challenge of, of that work was to make it accessible to people. It wasn't intended to be a wonky report that was going to sit on a shelf. It was intended to be accessible to regular folks and to policymakers. And frankly, back to your first question, what can I do in the office? I think it's really important that the auditors 
work be accessible to people. So I will pledge to Vermonters that every report that comes out of that office will have a summary in plain English that everyone can understand. Now, many legislators have a lot of experience and they don't need that kind of hand-holding, but most folks, have, yeah, most folks have little knowledge of what the auditor's office does, and when the reports are published, they're often in technical jargon that doesn't make it easy for folks to get it. So I want to work on that. I think we can do a, a better job with that. Well, very good, and Doug, thanks an awful lot for coming down to Wyndham County here in Brattleboro in particular and letting people get to know you. I appreciate your time. Take care and good luck on your uh, campaign. Thank you very much. Well, as you can see, uh, there's the Democratic ticket for this uh, coming uh, election cycle, and I uh, hope you can get in and support most of them, folks. I, I like a lot of what they have to say, uh, although the, um, there is a certain candidate running for auditor, as most of you know, that I will be endorsing, and that is Senator Vincent Luzzi, who, of course, wouldn't be down at this uh, event. Um, but saying that, there's an awful lot of good candidates here. Check them out and uh, give them your support if you can. I'd like to see a single payer come to the state of Vermont, I can tell you that, or self-insured. Okay, let's call it that. Uh, anyway, with that, hope you enjoyed this part of the Pulse. And now we're going to head out on the street for the rest of the Pulse and bring it to the Stanley Fest. Right over here. Oh, Stanley Stock. That's it. Jeez, I'm crow. Good thing I got Joe here. <laughs> Okay, Joe, bring the camera. We're on a roll. Okay, uh, so we're going to start our show out of the pulse here with a very special guest, somebody I didn't even recognize, but she was kind of hidden over here in the corner and stuff. And I just wanted to give her an opportunity because uh, I know her parents watch this award-winning show of ours, so I wanted her to get in a little opportunity to say hi to Mom and Dad. Hi, Boozer. Hi, Bob. Okay, very good. Got me, Joe. Okay, I don't know what we got here, but uh, we're going to interview him see how he's doing and what's his name okay let's see what his name is and uh you are uh and w how long you been out here for and you are standing watch over what are you standing watch over so you're really not very talkative are you you know what? It's kind of hard to have an interview with a dinosaur that won't talk back. So we're going to leave him be. Um, thanks for you know spending a little time with us, but that's it. I guess that's it. He's not talking. Okay, you are? Justin Kenny. And Justin, where are you from? Dummerston. Okay, and I see you got a Bill Sorrell uh, sticker. And uh, uh, I, you're out with a table supporting them, and, and I want to know why. You're, you're a young kid. I want to know what got you out here and you're doing this. All right, well, I'll tell you. At the beginning of the summer, oh, I started oh. looking for ways up with the Vermont Democratic Party and looking for a campaign that I wanted to work for. And I looked at everyone from Shumlin to Welch to Bernie, and Bill Sorrell is the guy who really impressed me the most because he's a nonpartisan figure. He's someone who wants to be the Attorney General so he can advocate for the state of Vermont, regardless of whether they're Republicans, they're Democrats, they're independents, whatever. He does his job, that's all he does, and that's all he wants to keep on doing. And I think that's rare in politics today. I, mean, I think that's a shame, and I think we need more people like those around, not less. Okay, well, very good. I like your thinking. Keep it up, and uh, okay. nice to see you out here supporting something you believe in. Thanks. <laughs>
got friends in the new way. But he likes it better than the old way.
I got one. Babo came up with one. You know what else you do with a drunken sailor? Hit him in the head with a rusty hammer. Hit him in the head with a rusty hammer. Hit him in the head with a rusty hammer. Thank you very much. Oh, you are a heavy, heavy star right here.